Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 6 of my Industrial Revolution 3 playthrough. In this episode, we are going to finish up with automation, which will allow us to start building the complex machines, such as the ore crushers, that we need for our new ore crushing setup. Enjoy! The next step of our process here is to make the basic engines. And those basic engines are essentially a component into the burner miner drill to make it easier to make, but also, if we wanted to build more labs, we would need them to. Let's just plan the build out here. So it will require the pistons, which will be available, as well as quite a few copper gears and copper plates. And oh, it's so much easier having all these inserters ready to go, rather than having to handcraft everything. And if we do that, and have a pipe, that should get most of the things that we need, so... Oh, that was so much faster. It's very satisfying getting the automation all figured out. We could put it here, or we could space it down a little bit if we wanted to. Let's see if we can get it to work from here, because then it would just line up better with this other machine and also this belt. So there we go, we got that fixed. Now it's lined up with the other machines. So we'll have input right there, output right there. And this is probably as far as this belt is going to go, because we shouldn't need them for anything else. Let's see if this works. It does, it just has a lot of items that go into it but it's also a slow craft. But it's running great, making engines. One more thing to add to our list, because that's one less thing that we're going to have to worry about. And I don't worry too much about having this sorted, because it's not really practical to have it sorted, because you can't easily move these around, so it's just going to become a mess, and that's fine, because whenever we get robot logistics, we'll be able to get rid of all of these reserve spaces. But we need another one of these, and the furthest down it can go is right there. So if we step on this panel, now we're getting engines. So the final bit we need to take care of so we can actually manufacture these burner drills relatively quickly, at least the big components, are the large copper frames. And these are the hard ones because they require a huge amount of copper plates and rivets. However, it also requires a new item that we haven't worked with yet besides the handcrafting part is the copper capped beam. And that is something that needs to be made in a large assembler because it has three components, but it's more copper plates and more rivets, and then a wooden beam. And that wooden beam, of course, comes from wood. Since we can't automate the production of wood, the best we can do is just drop wood from our inventory in chests when required. And of course, we can use the transfer plates for logistics to make this easier. But it does mean that this is a two-step process. First, we need to make the beams, and then we make the frames. So first, we'll wanna search for beams to see if these go into other things. And they really only go into steam derricks. It's not like we're gonna ever make one of these ever again. In fact, I think this is the only place you can actually make a steam derrick. So other than that, it's only the copper frame. So it's important to look at this every time we make a new item because it means we have no reason to ever make copper capped beams and put them in our inventory. We can put them straight into the copper frames and then keep the copper frames in our inventory because we do need those. Ah, it feels so good to see all this action happening and it's crafting that we are not doing. So we know we're going to need at least two of these steam assemblers, but it goes by a lot faster now that we've made most of the parts that go into it, but also the fact we don't have to worry about the small assemblers at all. Lots of stone bricks to use. I am certainly fine with that. And as always, more torches. Luckily the nights aren't particularly dark here because of the vanilla settings. All right, there's one of the assemblers. That's good enough to get started. We're probably gonna do these side by side rather than in line because otherwise it would just be huge. But the first thing we need to do is make the copper capped beams, which requires three items. So hopefully we can get all of these with one assembler. So is that enough? Thank goodness it is. I don't know if the order really matters, but let's put the wood on the very end. And of course, to make rivets, we're going to need the rods. So the input belt would come in somewhere around here, long-handed right there to make it reach, and then also the wood. Now eventually we will have a belt coming in here to deliver the wood, but since we're not at that point right now, we kind of need to just manually deliver the wood. And how about we use a tin chest for this? Might as well make it a big one. We certainly have enough wood in our inventory and this is a place to make it disappear, so we might as well. And let's use a steam inserter, even though technically we can use a burner. 
because I'd rather not be burning this wood away because it's quite valuable. And we'll set this request for wood. So that's the first bit. But we also have to concern ourselves with the second half of this. Making the large copper frames. And first we want to check, is this enough wooden beams for the frames? Oh, it absolutely is not. So that's a good thing we checked. Because it means we're going to need another one of them. At least to try to max out the inputs of this. So hopefully the size of all these remain the same. So we don't have to change both the left and right sides at the same time. We can just do direct insertion for this because we don't need to worry about holding on to these items. Well, first of all, let's see. Are we going to make anywhere near enough beams for this? And the answer is no, not even close. We would need way, way, way more beams than this. Is that going to be a sufficient number of these? Probably. Even if this machine was running at full blast, it would only make 0.15 of these large frames a second, but the large frames are only needed for the large machines, which we don't often need, so this will probably be fine. Even though we've automated a lot of this stuff, it's still important when you're in the early game to not overbuild anything, and I think trying to max out this assembler is just not worth it, especially because we can't even max out this wood, so one of these going at full blast is still going to suck up a little bit more than half a wood a second, so it's actually going to disappear rather quickly. That should supply enough resources to max out these two wood beam assemblers. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. This doesn't actually have to be in line with these other machines now that we're not reusing this belt. Of course, we could still try to make that happen, but would we want to? Uh, kind of, because we do need to drop the wood in there, so it needs to be able to reach from here. And my guess is no, it does not. So we can put like a pipe right there to mark that the chest for the wood needs to be no higher than that. So it would basically be like this. And I believe that will get everything connected. Luckily making these undergrounds is pretty easy since they just require pipes which we already have in our inventory. Looking good. This is an important machine to run quickly. We needed a bunch of stuff there, and you can definitely see why it's important to have all of these plates in a line, because after a while, you're going to have a very long set of machines here, and it really helps to just be able to walk in a straight line. So we're actually quite close to bumping into this one on this setup, but it is what it is, unfortunately. Although, one advantage to inserting this into a pallet is that pallets do not interfere with you or your vehicles. You could just walk over them freely. And yeah, we walked on that panel, which filled each one of these chests up to the maximum amount of wood that they can hold. This is going to suck up a huge amount of copper, as most things do now. So, not much to be done about it. We've certainly maxed out the belt, so it is what it is. Alright, that's one more thing to add to our list of items. And it's one of the last things we need to. But it feels good. I guess at this point we can try to sort this a little better. Okay, making progress, but we still don't quite have everything we'd want because we also need to hold some of the basic items that are easily assembled by a small assembler, but not easily assembled by our character. So for example, we need tin plates for the burner miner drill and we need copper gears for the steam crusher. So those are things we need to make as well. And another thing that would be nice to make are these empty fuel cells to put steam in because right now we're just kind of awkwardly carrying a small amount of them but it would be nice to have an inventory filled with them. Luckily all of these small items are pretty easy to make but let's work on making the empty cells. So we'll want an assembler for this but now that we have the large copper frames it's that easy so instead of taking three minutes we just need to take a few seconds to make those tin parts and now we have an assembler. So we have finally conquered that crafting queue, at least for now. Certainly any future technologies we have, we will uh, make them much faster by automating the parts ahead of time and not handcrafting them. So it feels good to have those taken care of. We're going to need some steam cells, which requires the copper plates and rivets. So let's make one of each and see what the numbers are. And the numbers are just fine. Unfortunately, to do this properly, we're going to need the circuit network. So for now, let's just separate the production of fuel cells 
in the filling of fuel cells. So it would need to look kind of like this. We kind of have the same problem as before, is we need to get these resources down. But for OCD reasons, we need to make them be in a straight line. <laughs> well, we have already done this, and we know what the solution is. If we want to do copper plates, it needs to be this. And if we want to do copper rivets, it needs to be this. So it does help to do things in a unified manner because then it means like next time we need to make any of these items instead of doing them in custom builds we can kind of just copy something that we've already done and it should more or less work. So when we pick all this up it should mostly fit as long as we line it up here and it looks like it. Unfortunately we are going to be bumping into the steam interface a little bit while we're walking by which is not ideal and I kind of want to change that because I really want these three squares to be open and not have us have things we could potentially be bumping into. So those take empty cells, this supplies new ones. And that is within range barely, so that should work great. So let's start making some empty cells here. However, we will not pick them up because our inventory is not set to pick up empty cells. And that's fine, we really don't want to have empty cells in our inventory, so it would be better if we didn't have them. However, we want to have a full inventory of cells, and if we can hold 50 in a stack, we'd want to have at least 50 full ones ready to go. So right now, we've just been, every time we have cells that need to be filled up, we'll stop here, the cells will get placed, and then we have to wait for them to be filled up. But if we had 50 on this pallet ready to go, then we wouldn't need to wait around. And actually, because of that, we probably want to have a tin pallet here to have more squares. So we could have some extras from up here, but also there would be room for any that came from our inventory. So we can just kind of keep picking up cells here as required, because every time we pick them up, they will be instantly transferred down here until we have a full supply in our inventory and a full supply of cells right here as well. It's going pretty good. Looks like the copper has basically caught up again, and so has the steam for the most part. Well, you know what we need? More stone bricks laid down, because I can never have enough concrete. This isn't strictly speaking concrete, but it's essentially the same thing, where we are paving until there is nothing left to be paved. We're continuing to fill up our inventory here, and we have a full 50 steam cells in reserve, but we also have only seven of them available here, so if we pick up these cells, they will be transferred down there and then those 50 cells will become 50 filled ones and there will be a few extra in here which we don't need to do anything with but they will be available for next time we need more cells. The last thing we need to automate to fully be able to manufacture anything are the basic components. And these are something we kind of need to think about too and if we actually want to carry them in our inventory. So do we want to carry either of the tin or copper plates? Do we want to carry bricks? Do we want to carry wooden beams? Either gears? either rods or the rivets or the pellets. So kind of a lot to check. As far as the wooden beams, they do go into a few things, but since we have not automated the production of wood yet, I kind of don't want to because it's a limited resource and I feel kind of bad putting them into beams when we don't, strictly speaking, need them for anything. Stone bricks we definitely want to have. They go into a very specific amount of things, but we're probably gonna persistently have them in our inventory because we're constantly going to be paving. So that's probably not going to be an issue. The copper plates, well, they certainly go into a lot of things, but a lot of those things are already in our inventory, so we need to look at the things that aren't in our inventory. So like the copper boilers, scatter gun turrets, scatter gun capsules, water pipes, offshore pumps, and if we needed to make more gears, we would do that. So it does seem like they go into enough things where we would want to have them on hand. Tin plates, of course, go into burner drills, they go into loaders, they go into pallets, they go into chests, they actually go into quite a few things. Copper gears, they are going to go into some things that we're going to handcraft, like the steam lab, the heavy roller eventually, stackers, steam crushers, one-way valves, so that is certainly a yes. Tin gears, they go into less 
but the big thing that they go into are steam assemblers, and we are going to be handcrafting those. Scatter gun turrets. So those are a yes. Copper rods. They go into a few things. A lot of it is fairly advanced stuff that we're not doing right now. But I would say they go into a sufficient amount of things that it would be annoying if we didn't have them. Plus, they do go into rivets. Rivets go into a limited number of things, but they go into things like water pipes, small steam tanks, heat sinks. So that's probably a yes. Tin rods. Well, they go into tin chests. But specifically, the transfer plates. I mean, we could automate transfer plates, I suppose. But we just don't need that many of them to seem worthwhile. But since we are manufacturing tin chests, we probably should make the tin rods as well. So we might as well add those in. And the last thing is copper pellets. And actually, the only thing the copper pellets go into are the copper cartridges, or in other words, the shotgun shells. So we definitely don't need to automate those. I suppose we should automate shotgun shells eventually, but, well, we're not doing any fighting right now, so it doesn't seem relevant. So we have a list of things we need to do, and it's done very simply here. Fortunately, getting them to reach might be kind of difficult, but we'll see what we can do. It's just going to be a line of machines, and then we will need some amount of storage. But because we don't know how many of these we're going to need, and because we are also putting other intermediate components on these tin pallets, we should probably do the same here. We haven't done it with things like the rotors or the motors, but we might just not need that many of them. So in the end, we could do something like this, and it would be lined up here. So would that reach? It would. I kind of want to move this over by one square, just so the next plate will access all of those. And we do need to get the steam connected, which is a little awkward for the ones in the middle. In fact, we can make it a little less awkward by making those be the first ones. Let's hook it up and see how it works. Oh, seems like it's going. We need to make requests for them and also decide if we even want to have them on our list here. We probably do. Of course, this list is going to get very crowded very quickly with just a bunch of random stuff. So it is something you kind of need to concern yourself with. But at some point, we're just going to need to decide on what stays and what goes. So if we step on this plate, <laughs> we get a bunch of stuff. So let's see what we can do here. We can try to mirror things a little bit just so we can track what we have. And eventually we'll have to clean this up. But for now, <laughs> we can just keep grabbing stuff. Feels nice. <laughs> And just like that, we now have everything we need to make a burner miner drill on demand. Or better yet, we can make a steam crusher. And look at that, it doesn't take three minutes anymore. It takes four seconds. Well, awesome. We now have a build that we have been waiting on for quite a while because we needed to get all of those resources. But now that we have them, we can easily make the machines that we need. So let's get rid of the beacon category because we know we won't need those. We need to have four drills, so we'll make one, make two, and then eight total crushers. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is so nice to be able to just do that. And we're going to need a bunch of stone furnaces as well, but those are actually the easy things to make. Well, I guess we didn't actually need to make those drills because we already have the four drills, but I guess we have more drills now. We don't really want to put it right here because this is going to be a very busy area with four resources being mined from this one spot. So if we're going to do any sort of expansion to this, we probably should just push it up. And unfortunately, there's a lot of water up there. It's not fun, because that is just going to get in the way of everything we try to do up here. But shrug, I guess? <laughs> this wasn't the best place to get started. I guess another place we can put stuff is just down here where these trees are because this will be open and we already have our mini bus up here so we're not going to need this space and there's some biters right there so we're probably going to be saying hello sometime soon <laughs> oh yes we certainly are so for now how about yes we will put it here and basically just take all these trees out so let's do a build here we can't really do direct insertion because this is powered by steam and this is powered by fuel so that won't really work so let's do the crushers first We'll assume that it's coming from over here somewhere. And it would probably be better for the crushers to be side by side like this. So they can share their steam. And great thing about IR3 is we don't need to set a recipe to any of these. That they will just set their own recipe. 
based on which item goes in. So it is quite easy. And actually, since we're using steam, we could use the long inserters too, just to make this even cleaner. So let's do the input on the top belt, then long inserters down here, and the output on the bottom belt, which requires long inserters up there and short inserters down here. And the rest of the space filled in by pipes. And also connected on each side. And we probably do want to have this short pipe in here so that can be an underground and we can actually walk through here if we need to. And I kind of want them to be connected on both sides even though they don't really need to be. It does look more symmetrical that way. And the belt also needs to go under the pipe. So that gets that done. We probably want to try to smush it in a little bit. We don't want to waste space. It's kind of hard to see, but are we up to... Yeah, it looks like there is a cliff here. So we have to put it a little further forward. So how about we do this and see what happens. And we are close to biters, but remember that most machines, including these crushers, do not actually create any pollution. So the crushers by themselves will not anger the biters. It's everything else. Even though we're not fighting the biters yet, we're not that far away from doing that. And it would be nice to have some fish to heal ourselves when that fight comes. And it looks like we do have some nearby patches of tin. We've got one there and one there, so we're not going to be short on tin for a long time. And because we have robots, we can robot fish. It's not too much easier, but it probably is a little easier. Might as well just grab a bunch of them. And put that in our inventory. How about right there? So we are ready for the biters whenever they decide to attack, and it may very well be when we place this down. And now that we have a large supply of steam cells, we can use the robots for a long period of time without having to run back to get more. Well, the resources are going to come out of this. Let's just add some spaces just in case we need to put something there. And how about we combine it up here with a different belt? Because now we need to have 24 stone furnaces. And we probably don't want to put them in a line. So how about we do six furnaces on each side and definitely need more stone bricks for this. This is one of the few things that is still going to require some amount of handcrafting because we need to make those wooden beams, but it is kind of a rare thing. And we could very well put wooden beams in our inventory too once we have uh, automated wood production. We now have the choice of do we use burner inserters and keep this clean and not have to use steam pipes? Or do we use steam pipes in order to have access to the long inserters? And I'm thinking in this situation, it would probably be a lot easier to just use burner inserters. And then we can put a second group of them sharing those belts. And then when all this is said and done, we are going to have 7.5 ingots a second and that's basically all we're going to be able to use until we have access to red belts because we're certainly not going to put two belts of copper coming through here that's just too much production for this stage of the factory and what's funny is we can actually deliver the copper and the coal on the same belt we'll just need one of them to be a bypass but let's get rid of the rest of these trees first and our inventory is quickly filling up again despite the fact we put all of those trees into those chests and now we kind of need to Clear all this out. It's going to create a lot of junk, but we're at the point now where we can try to handle that. Okay, we've got all that cleared out, but now we have a bunch of junk in our inventory, and this is a good opportunity to start the process of getting rid of junk. So how we would get rid of ore is we just need to place the ore somewhere at the end of the line here where it is likely to be consumed. And let's just make a few tin chests now that we have all of the items that go into them it's quite easy but of course we have no space for them let's put this there and it is going to have to be a steam inserter but there we go it's connected then we'll say this chest can request the copper ore this pad here does not quite reach but it doesn't actually need to be right here instead we'll try to put it basically right here where it covers all three of these chests so if we step on it now it can clear out any extra copper, stone, or coal that finds itself into our inventory. It can split to the right 
where the copper will go and the left to where the coal will go. Let's see if we can make this a straight line. Luckily we can right there. The spaghetti begins. Let's send this belt down here. And also the final belt is going to come in there as well. And I suppose when everything's said and done we can straighten this out a little bit. But also, it doesn't really matter. It does leave a lot of empty space in here, but having empty space is good. Just not too much, but we are going to want to leave room to expand in here, so it's not terrible to have that space. All right, well, let's disconnect that for a second because it is a little dark in here. We've used up about a quarter of our copper now, so it's a good thing that we are making it more efficient. The coal goes by and the copper goes in, but of course, these machines actually need to have steam for anything to happen. I kind of don't want to put torches everywhere just because it's a lot of stuff that I have to keep track of. So I'm not going to put torches in there, but we're not going to have to wait too long before we have lights to fill in that gap. But now that the steam is in here, the crushers are crushing and now they are making the crushed copper. Probably going to need quite a few torches in here to be able to see everything. But it is working. One of the great things about IR3 is it automatically sets recipes for everything that's relevant. So we don't have to do anything for the furnaces. They just automatically pick the correct recipe based on the input resource. So all of this is filling up. It's getting very dirty in here. However, we are making a ton of copper. We might actually start finding ourselves short on coal here, but of course we are filling up a huge buffer. But nonetheless, we would need to have 1.5 coal for that setup. And we're making about 2.1. So we're not that far off. So I kind of feel like we should try to add some more coal production to this. But we're also finding ourselves with too many copper ingots in our inventory. So in the event that that occurs, we also need to have a way to get rid of them. And out of all of the belts, this one would have the highest priority. And there is a steam pipe nearby here. This one is requesting to have the copper ingots. And this is definitely a be careful if you step here situation. So we're going to use the small plate to remind us that that is the case because we do want to have some copper ingots on hand. But if we step on this plate, we're going to get rid of all of our copper ingots. So we have to keep that in mind that if we step on this plate, we'll probably have to step on a different one to get some copper ingots back because although this is a pretty cool system, it is not smart enough to keep the copper ingot here that if you step on anything that is going to request all of your copper it will take it even the one that gets a special slot and that is just something you kind of need to work around so when we step here it takes every single copper ingot and we'll do the input priority on the left just to make sure that is the first belt that will always be used and since we want our copper we need to stand on this blade again to get it back it's looking pretty good but we probably want to have more coal than this but because these patches are so close together it means we're going to have to overlap some stuff unfortunately so hopefully if all of that is connected properly this will basically start up but we also need to have a place to drop extra coal but because we have more machines going now it's going to kind of have to be somewhere else like right here and we'll just put another be careful where you step plate right in there so the coal gets placed and you can see this is definitely going to create quite a bit of stone, which is frustrating to say the least. So our production of coal is related to our consumption of stone when it's set up like this. But that's about the best you can do if you actually want to be able to mine all of this. However, it looks like I put this on both sides again, which is potentially causing issues. I guess it doesn't matter because it's being properly sorted when it gets to that point. But nonetheless, it should be on, it looks like this side of the belt and the steam derrick is now down to 17.4 so it is barely helping at this point and now that we have consumed a healthy amount of resources let's test the full lineup of all of our transfer plates where any resources we need we just walk down and we basically get replenished for everything and we don't even have to think about it we're just getting everything we need it is quite nifty. So what does the pollution look like? Eh, well, these trees are kind of helping as far as these biters are concerned. So they haven't attacked yet. We did just work on some coal here. However, if we work on crushing that coal, 
Although it won't improve the energy efficiency of the coal, it will reduce the pollution of it, and anything that they use will also have their pollution reduced. And since coal is pretty much the primary polluter of the entire factory right now, that's a big difference. So let's do a setup here. It's pretty straightforward. Our goal is crushed coal. So how about having eight crushers is a pretty decent idea here. And luckily making these is pretty straightforward. And we have to do some handcrafting because we just didn't have the number of copper gears we would need. But that's kind of as simple as running back and grabbing more copper gears. There we go, just in time. So we can make two more and we're ready to rock and roll. So the setup is actually going to be extremely similar to this, where it has an input and an output. So because of that, why not just copy basically the entire thing, including the undergrounds. And we'll put it out here somewhere, so hopefully it doesn't interfere with anything else. How about near where that cliff is? This belt is probably just going to go the other direction and back out the other side. Now the crushed version is going to need to go into there and then get put to where it needs to go. So in goes the coal. It is kind of hard to see them, but due to those settings of making the brightness of each item slightly different, you can see them. Prior to having that setting, they were extremely difficult to see on these belts, but you can actually see them now. But there they go, puffing away and happily supplying their crushed coal to the rest of the factory. And it will eventually get sucked up by every relevant machine. So the only ones that ultimately won't get it are the miners mining the coal to begin with. And you can kind of tell the difference where on these miners they're making 15 pollution a minute, but now the miners that are getting the crushed coal are only making 11.25. And... Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't help myself but do things properly that since the pollution from the drills is such a major source of pollution in the factory, as annoying as it would be, it kind of makes sense to somehow get the crushed coal in here as a fuel source for these drills. So let's just do that. <laughs> and we have achieved success. That's the end of this episode. On the next one, we're going to start making bronze, which will finally send us into the Bronze Age. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.